Hey traders, this is Christian from Arts Tribeca Trade Group with your end of day recap. And um, story of the day, Apple, or especially aftermarket, real nice earnings across the board for Apple. I believe their conference call starts shortly at, uh, I believe that's at 5 o'clock. Yeah, so probably just started at 5 o'clock. So Apple did report. It's giving a lift to a lot of technology names after the close. A lot of the chip makers are moving up. Um, you can see the, Na the Nasdaq's up 82 basis points. So it is the biggest weight. I think Apple's, what, an 11% weight in the queues. So really, really uh, giving the whole group a lift. You know, names like Avago, Broadcom, you know, Broadcom um, up nicely. Skyworks also up nicely. Why is this not zooming out? There we go. Uh, let's go over to Skyworks. Um, you can see Skyworks up to 107, so up three bucks after the close. So, you know, a lot of bad news was expected. Um, we actually played it long. So I, I played it long for earnings. Um, why did I do that? Uh, because I thought that um, the I thought people were just uh, basically um, implying that um, that there was going to be some bad news released. So when when people are thinking that, you know, I, I, I wasn't really planning on going long Apple, but this is kind of listening to people talk about it on CNBC and on Bloomberg, people are, oh, they, they could come out and they're going to delay the, the iPhone. There's not going to be anything good that they expect. So I kind of changed and I said, hey, why don't I put on a trade here? And I actually went out to next week and I did the, uh, the 152, 155 and a call spread, which is basically the same price as this week's call spread. So I was a little bit creative and actually went out to next week just in case the report wasn't going to be that strong. Um, I did have one name that I did not do well on, COHR, which had a great um, great history of reporting earnings, but uh, they fell. So it's probably I'm probably going to be flat for earnings plays. Um, however, I do have a couple other plays on in technology that should do well on this. So, um, you know, you just be mindful of that when everybody's all, always on one side of the fence going into earnings, you know, just like what, what we saw with, you know, Google and Amazon, everybody's bowled up on it and it kind of fizzled. So, you know, when everybody's kind of doesn't have much expect expectations and the name reports well, uh, that's basically what happens. Okay, so in just besides that, that's the main story of the day, especially after the close story. Uh, you know, the today just kind of seemed like a little bit of rotation, just more of the same. A lot of chop in the major indices. You kind of you, you look at the S and P, and it's again just not moving at all. Um, you know, over the last couple of weeks. You know, very very small moves in the S and P, and then you kind of look at the sectors in it and. and um, you know, that's pretty much why that the S&P is flat because you kind of look across and you see some sectors that are down on the day and some, some sectors that are up. Names that were up, um, ITB, which is the Home Builders ETF, this was all lumber liquidators. There was really some kind of some interesting moves for names. Uh, that's kind of why I play that COHR long, but uh, lumber liquidators, big move. Um, shop, big move after earnings. CGNX, big move after earnings. So, you know, there was a lot of small cap names, you know, that had specialized names that did really well on earnings the day before. Uh, you know, you kind of look at the, the some of these spaces, um, telecom doing very well right now. Uh, Verizon continues to move higher. So it does seem like people have kind of rotated around some of their money and, and, and chasing some of these names. Like Intel is another name, for example, it was really out of favor. It's kind of the, the some of the names that have been, we've been seeing some buying in or some uh, move up here uh, has been names that have been out of favor. I mean, Intel is now above the 200 day moving average, you know, a name that was really out of favor and kind of broke down um, prior to earnings. So right back to in this range again for Intel. Um, and then the banks have been doing well quietly. Citigroup is has made a 52-week high, so really impressive performance for Citigroup. We've been seeing call buying in that name the last, you know, just here and there. We've been seeing kind of steady call buying in Citigroup. So real nice move, 52-week high for for Citigroup. Nice article out in Barrons this weekend about um, about City as well. Uh, some utilities also did well today, defense names. Um, and then you look at the underperformers today, and it was metals and mining. Uh, biotech got hit right away. Um, I actually have a long biotech play on, and I and I added to it um, on the weakness today. So, But uh, this got hit right off, uh, you know, right off the start of the day. You can kind of see this come back here a little bit. 
towards the end of the day. But um, again, kind of just goes back to why the S&P is flat. You've got almost the same amount of sectors down as you have up. So it's, it's not like nothing is moving in the S&P. It's just that you've got major separation going on one way, you know, every day, it seems like you have a, a number of uh, sectors that are on my watch list, subsectors that are up over 1%. And then you've got a whole bunch that are down over a percent too. Energy um, was weak today. OH was down 1.1%. Uh, some agriculture names were down with Mosaic earnings. Um, and then the XME ETF, the metals and mining ETF was also down today. So, um, you know, I, I I see everybody kind of quoting every day that the S&P is not moving. But again, you, you, you want to take a look at and see what's why is that happening? And it's just because implied correlations are very low. NASDAQ is a little bit different. You know, NASDAQ seems to be have some difficulty besides obviously this move. This this might change. This might turn it around. Uh, this this Apple after the close. But, um, you know, up until now, you know, it's been kind of not being able to hold on to the early gains pre-market. So um, that I think you want to keep your eye on some of the same things that we talked about yesterday. The transports finished down again. I think the transports are what now, I think, almost down to the 200-day moving average. Yeah, basically down to the 200-day moving average. The DAX is another um, area that I've been talking about. You can look at the HEWG ETF, and um, that's been that had a nice bounce today. So the DAX was was up today. I think it finished up 1.1 percent. So that's a good sign, right? So some of these warning signs, hopefully they cancel themselves out. Transport's still a work in progress. One thing that I found interesting today was um, there was some hedging that looks like is taking place. EWS, which is the Singapore ETF. I mean, some of these na some of these international uh, Asian countries have just been absolutely on fire this year. I mean, there, it is a little bit overbought on the RSI, but there was 5,000 November 23 puts. Also, an AA, um, what is this one? Um, AAXJ, is it? Um, I'm, for, I'm, I'm screwing this up. That's the wrong. AAXJ, that, that is right. So this is Asia without Japan in it. So it's kind of like EM, um, but it's a little bit different. So it looks like there were some puts, you know, going all the way to December, December 75 puts bought and December 75 calls sold. So have these things run up a little bit too much? You could kind of see what's in this ETF. It's, um, you know, it's Tencent, it's Samsung, it's Alibaba, Taiwan Semi, China Construction, China Mobile, Baidu. So these names have been absolutely on fire. Is, so is this surprising that someone is, I mean, granted, this is a pretty big trade. Uh, I believe this was $4 million a side. Um, so, no, sorry, that's wrong. $4 million on the put side. And uh, because this is out of the money, the, the calls uh, that they sold were for less money. But, um, you know, this, this group, this Hang Sang has, has just been absolutely on fire. I talk about this almost every day, especially, you know, if you look at the Hang Sang performance, I mean, this is now, I think, a 77 RSI. So this thing is overbought. I mean, look at this thing. Um, really looking extended to me. And, um, you know, seems like a good place to maybe take, take a little bit of profits. I'm not doing that. I'm long EEM. I'm, you know, going to kind of let the trend go. Um, but it's not a bad place at the very least to maybe hedge a little bit because these things are looking pretty, pretty cooked, um, sizzling hot right now. So uh, I want to go through just quickly the option activity today. Uh, I thought there was a couple of notable, uh, notable trades. MetLife, there was 10,000 September 57 and a half calls. I actually took this trade, not for big size. Uh, because I'm probably going to sit with it through earnings. Um, so MetLife, I, I like this chart. So I'm always a little bit uh, cautious when we see that kind of option activity before earnings, but I like the chart. So I just said, you know what, regardless of that, and that's half of the t half of what I'm looking for when I look at option activity is I'm looking at ide for looking for ideas, something that I wasn't looking at previously. ETP, we've been seeing a lot of ETE calls. We saw some ETP as well, so in these AMLP names. Um, call buying, BAC, Citigroup, RF. Uh, this trade caught my eye, SHW. Uh, this is a name that's been sinking after earnings. Um, you kind of see, I don't have the 100-day moving average, but I do over here. 
Um, this, I think, is a good name to play against that support. If it breaks the 100-day moving average, I would get out <laughs> because you've got uh, a long way to get down to the 200-day moving average, but it might hold in here. So someone probably thinking the same. Uh, these were pretty expensive when you look at the price that they paid. You know, 16 bucks. So don't let the size of the contracts deceive you. You know, this was a $1.6 million trade. This was a $1.5 million trade. So some size buying going out to uh, December. So that was interesting. Um, so Rite Aid calls went up. Big, big hefty block of Rite Aid. Also August traded as well. Uh, there are some Yelp calls. Realogy, which we've seen call buying. We saw call buying on Friday, and we saw call buying again today. Um, real real sharp, aggressive call buying in that name. That name reports earnings just in a couple of days. I believe it's on the 3rd they report. 8CLP, another earnings name. And um, again, it's a lot of this earnings name, but a name that's just gotten crushed. What's the name of this company? High Crush. Haha, uh -huh. little delayed joke there. Uh, but they went out and they, they you know, now who knows if they're hedging a little bit here, but, you know, how much more is this thing going to go down? Um, they bought the September 10 calls. So if you're looking to take a shot at something for 35 cents, you know, big downtrend this name is in. But, you know, sometimes these um, these earnings releases could really change things if they say something positive could get a nice bounce. Uh, we saw a little bit of Mosaic calls go up. And then you can see a lot of puts. You know, so fire eyes up after the close. There were some puts that went up the day. I re very rarely uh, take anything that, unless it's super, super aggressive, that we see same day as earnings. I, I feel a lot of uh, hedging that happens the same day when a name reports. Let's see if this name's still up. Yep, still up. So that's it. Um, for today's recap, thank you for watching and uh, see you back in the trading room bright and early Wednesday morning. Thanks, everybody.